Okay, finally ready to do this video. I've been having so many troubles with the computer getting the recording to work. First I couldn't get the sound. The sound was all coming out bad. And then the camera stopped working. But I think everything's alright now. So, what are we going to do today in Call Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop? Welcome to Call Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Call Dude Clem. Well, some of you might recognise this. This is that radio circuit that I made, which I'm going to be putting into a proper enclosure, but instead of working on that today, well, still going to be doing something about that going to be making a power supply for it. Now what I intend to do is use this wall wall power supply here as the main high tension power supply because this can work as low as 12 volts. So I've got a 12 volt power supply there. I've got another power supply here which I've opened up carefully. And I really do mean opened up carefully because don't want to damage anything inside because I'm going to modify this one. This one is going to be for the filament supply, but this is only a 5 volt supply. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a 7 volt supply. Or oh, roundabouts that voltage. And that's also going to be connected in series with the 12 volt supply. So I'll get about 19 volts. I think that's going to be plenty enough voltage for this circuit. And as you can probably tell, this is a switch mode supply. And from what I can see, it's, it is a regulated supply. We've got our optocoupler feedback right there. And there's a Zener diode down there somewhere. I saw it earlier. It's, uh, I think it's right about there. That's obviously being used for a reference voltage. But apart from that, I don't actually see any other parts in this power supply for voltage regulation. There's one, there's one transistor there. There's one transistor there. There's another transistor on the back somewhere, which is right there, but that's on the low voltage side. So I'm not exactly sure what that one's doing, but I'm not going to worry about that. And that's pretty much all she wrote, as Dave would say on the EV blog. So I'm not really sure how this one actually regulates. The only thing I can think of is maybe it turns the oscillator on and off whenever it's needed to keep the voltage stable. But anyway, modifying one of these is Dead easy, you just gotta know what you're doing. And 7 volts should be within its capabilities, so I don't think we're going to run into any problems there. And then we'll have a look at the waveforms. I'm gonna connect my oscilloscope to the output of the transform, and we'll have a look at some waveforms. Actually, let's go and do that right now. Let's do some science. Right, so I've got the power supply on. This piece of insulating well, actually, it's just part of a case of a Sega Saturn game, but it'll do. I've got the output connected to these three fans, which came out of my laptop cooling pad, because they're USB powered, and as USB is 5 volts, that's a pretty good match. And I'm also connecting this to my oscilloscope. We've got the ground lead connected to the oscilloscope's ground. And from what I can see, that is connected directly to this wire on the transformer here. And the diode right, and the rectifying diode right here is connected to the other wire on the transformer. Alright, so I'm going to plug this in. Now, pay no attention to this transformer here. All that's doing is it's just holding the mains wire down so it doesn't move around. So that's not actually part of the circuit. I'm going to plug this in and we'll see those fans start spinning. And now what I'm going to do is, as I'm curious about what kind of waveform we're going to get out of the transformer, we're going to hook my scope up to that and we'll see exactly what we have. Hopefully not trying to short anything out on the way. Oh yes, we have a very ugly looking waveform. I really expected it to be better than that. And this is the waveform we're getting off the transformer. There we go. 
Man, that is ringing and shimming about like nobody's business. Okay, I'm now going to unplug those fans, but still have the power supply itself plugged in, so I'm curious as to, this, uh, as to whether it does anything to the waveform, so let's see. Okay, that's what the fans completely unplugged. Oh, well, we can definitely see that ringing now. Let's plug those fans back in. Okay, time to modify this thing. And it's a good thing that I drew a schematic diagram because I was wrong in just about every single thing I thought about this. This little thing here that I thought was a transistor, that's actually a shunt regulator. This thing here that I thought was a transistor? No. That's an active switcher. And here's the schematic of the power supply, or at least the high voltage side of the power supply. And yes, I know I've left out the values of some of these capacitors here, but the thing is, those are the surface mount ones, and I just don't know what those are because there's no markings on them, so I've just had to leave them blank. And there's the Zener diode that I mentioned earlier, and that's not being used as a voltage reference. That's just providing a low voltage to the optocoupler and the base of this transistor. Not sure what the voltage is, I haven't measured it, it's probably 12 volts, something like that. And this is the low voltage side. I don't know if I mentioned that I only drew one half of the autocoupler there because the other half is right there on this schematic. Doesn't look quite as complicated. All this stuff here that may look rather confusing but all it does is just makes the LED in the optocoupler get a fraction of the output voltage and it shifts it up a little bit, you know, gives it a little bit of offset. So anyway, the key to modifying any switch mode power supply for either higher voltage or lower voltage, as long as it's a regulated switch mode power supply, is to find the voltage divider. Now I thought it was these two resistors here because they look suspiciously like a voltage divider, but they're not. Those two don't look much like a voltage divider to me. So it's not those two resistors. It's these two resistors, this one here and this one here, which is this resistor and this resistor here. Okay, so we've got it plugged in and running. I also have a 60 watt bulb in series with the AC, just in case that bulb, if that bulb comes on and I'll suddenly unplug everything. Anyway, I've got this up and running. A moth just flew into my eye. Anyway, I've got this resistor, which is a 4.7K, connected to the middle point of that voltage divider. I've also covered up the high voltage part. That way, if I should accidentally touch it, I'm not going to zorch something in there or zap myself. But anyway, measuring the output voltage, which is, at the moment, 5.13 volts. So now we'll see what happens when I connect this resistor across the other resistors in the voltage divider, changing their resistance, and it should change the output voltage. Okay, so first let's see what happens when I connect the resistor here. And we've gone down to 4.2 volts. Okay, so now let's see what happens when I connect it here. And if I'm right, the voltage should go up. Yeah, look at that. We're now at 6.4 volts. And you know, I think that will be just about right for the valve's filament. So that's what I'm going to do. Now because I'm absolutely no good with surface mount, I'm just going to hardwire, I mean, I'm just going to solder this resistor, I'm just going to bodge it on between there and there, so we get a higher voltage. I was going to try and make this about 7 volts, but I think 6.4 will do. Okay, well, here we are. Here is the finished product, or at least the modified power supply. 
on we've got our 6.4 volts and here is my little bodge the modification I made to this power supply so it's now a suitable power supply for the filament of a valve that's just about it for this episode of cool dude Clem's electronic workshop so until next time goodbye